Okay, so now we're going to talk a little bit about how to write numbers in scientific writing. All right, so we actually use this a lot, and so it's really an important skill to have. And it becomes second knowledge or um, habit pretty quickly, okay? So you can see that the sentence is, people have an average of 1 times 10 to the 5th hairs on their scalp. So each hair is about eight times 10 to the minus six meters wide. And so that's telling you that that's a very large amount of hairs on the scalp and that the hair is very, very small. So let's look into this a little bit more. And again, the key here is gonna be writing uh, numbers in scientific notation, okay? So numbers that are written in scientific notations have two parts. There's a coefficient, which is the first part, and then to the power of 10. And so when we practice this, the coefficient is going to be the first starting numbers, and then the power of 10 is going to tell you how many times you're going to either times it by 10 or divide it by 10, depending on if it's to the positive 10th power or the negative 10th power. Okay, so if we practice this, we can write out 2,400 in scientific notation. The coefficient would be 2.4. So what we want to do is we want to move the decimal point over so that we just have one single number and then the point whatever behind it. Okay, so you can see that if I move this decimal point one, two, three times, that now becomes 2.4. And we moved that uh, zero or the decimal point over three times. So that's how we know that the power is to the third. So again, the coefficient is going to be that single number. So it can't be 10.4 or 24.0, whatever. For this example, it has to be a single number point and then decimals. So your coefficient for this one is going to be 2.4. And then we move that decimal point three times. So it'll be to the power of three. So when we rewrite it, we're going to have that the product of the coefficient is multiplied by the power of 10, and that's going to be written as 2.4 times 10 to the power of 3. Okay, so again, all we did is we counted how many times we're going to move the decimal point over to make it a single digit. So we moved it over to the left three times, which means we have to multiply it um, by three, 10 three times. Okay, so again, he started out with 2,400, we go to a single number, and then we realized that we had to move it uh, the three places, so that's how you get 10 to the power of 3. Now, if we practice that going the opposite way, okay, you see now that we have 10 to the negative power. So you can see that we have this original number, 0 .00086. Well, we have to make the coefficient a single number. So we want to make this a number less than 10. So that would be 8 and then whatever residual we have. So 8.6. How many times do we have to move that decimal point to make it 8.6? 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So that will be 8 times 8.6 8 times 10 to the negative fourth because we move the decimal point um, four times. Uh, the other way. So this one, when we move the decimal point to the left to make it a, a, a smaller number, then that's going to be the positive. But when we make it a larger number, then that's going to be the negative power. Okay, here are a couple other examples. Okay, if we look at the number 10,000, well, what is that? How many times do we have to remove this decimal point to make it a single number? And then a whole bunch of zeros, we'd have one, two, three, four. So that's 10 times 1 to the 4th. Same here. How many times do we need to move this decimal point over to make it a single number? 1, 2, 3. So that would be timesing it by 10 three times or 10 um, to the 3rd power. And again, we only move the decimal point 1, 2 times. So that's 10 to the 2nd power, 10 to the 1st first power. The 1st power, you like that? The 1st power would just be 10. And then 10 to the 0 power would just be um one okay so um here's another way on how you can do it with the smaller numbers again it's how many times you have to move it the decimal point to the right to make it a whole number so instead of a fraction so if we move this decimal point to the right one time then that's going to be one and so that's why it's um one times ten to the negative one because we moved it to the right and then again one two times to make it a whole number so that'd be negative two. One, two, three. That's how you get the three. Okay. 
So this is how we are going to be um, doing scientific notation. And again, we use this a lot. So right now we're in the middle of the COVID um, crisis, right? But uh, this is using chicken pox as an example. And so you can see that the diameter of a chicken pox virus is actually very small. And it would be very hard to say it's 0 0.000003 meters big. So it's a lot easier to say, oh, it's three times 10 to the minus seven meters big, okay? And so that's why we use these scientific notations to make it easier to um, to refer to. And so here's a couple other examples of um, different things. So the volume of gasoline used in the United States per year is a lot of liters. Okay, and so then again, how many times do we need to move this decimal point over so that we can make it a single number? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. So it'd be 5.5 times 10 to the 11th. Oh, look. Again, it was right. Yay. So, um, and then you can just practice with the other ones and it, you, it goes on with any um, label. So liters, meters, um, looks like seconds, kilograms, grams, meter, kilograms. So this is just, that's the wonderful thing about the metric system. Everything's in tens. And so it all, it works for everything. Okay. You can also do this on your calculators. Okay, and um, you can be enter you can enter these into the calculator using the exponential key or the EE key. And here's a couple different examples on what your calculator will say and how you can uh, how it will uh, denote if it's um, the difference of powers between one and ten followed by the space and then how many um, powers of ten. Okay. So again, how do you write it? You Step one is going to be moving the decimal point to obtain a coefficient that's at least 1 but less than 10, so that number between 1 and 10. Okay. Step two is going to be expressing the number of places that's moved as the power of 10, and then step three is going to be writing the product of the coefficient multiplied by the power of 10. So how would you write each of these in scientific um, notation? I'll give you a second. Okay. Remember, we want to make it a single number, and then we have to count how many times we're going to be moving the decimal place. Okay. Ready? All right. So for the first one, again, we're going to be moving the decimal point to obtain the coefficient between 1 and 10. So we're going to be looking at 6.4. Then how many times did we have to move that decimal point? 1, 2, 3, 4 times. So that's why we're going to be 10 to the 4th. And then when we combine those two together to make step 3, we're going to be 6.4 times 10 to the 4th. Okay. Now, on the separate uh, on the other hand, using a smaller number, well, again, how many times do we have to move the decimal point to make it a whole uh, number? One, two times. So then that would be uh, minus two, because remember, we moved the, the decimal point the other way. And so that's how we get 2.1 times 10 to the minus two. So I hope that this was helpful.